What's good everyone, it's Ed Sparky here to shock you down to Electric Avenue. But can we take it higher than our last Nuzlocke in Pokemon Black? This time I'll be doing an Electric type Nuzlocke. The Electric type is an interesting one. With only one weakness, it's a pretty versatile type. Electric types tend to be fast and pretty strong. But their big drawback is that they're usually on the frailer side. Last time I struggled because of frailty, but there are more Pokemon this time, which could offset the decrease in bulk. There's six catchable electric lines in black, but because of my no legendaries rule, we can't catch Thunderous and we have to choose one of either Tenmo or Joltik, making the other inaccessible, which is a shame because their lines are probably the best electric types of this game. That brings our number of usable lines down to four. Or would, if not for a soon to be revealed surprise. I can already tell making sure everyone stays alive this challenge is gonna be really hard. But at least with an extra Pokemon, let's see if we can make it past Getsus. Before we begin, here are the rules of the Nuzlocke. You can only catch the first electric type encounter in each area. I'm playing with Species Claw, so if I catch a Pokemon, I can't catch another of that species even if the rules allow it. I can separately catch Pokemon for HM use, but I can't use them in battle. If a Pokemon faints, it counts as dead and can no longer be used. No items can be used in battle except ones previously attached to a Pokemon. The battle mode must be on set, and finally, there's no leveling past the cap of a gym leader's ace. If a Pokemon does this, it can no longer be used until the gym is over. And with that out of the way, let's begin! We can start the game and- wait, are those square clouds? Because there are no electric type Pokemon before the first gym, I'm not sure what to do. But, sparks fly from my DS, and as they clear, I see I can somehow pick a Blitzel instead of an Oshawott to start my run. But Blitzel can't even make it past the first battle before Bianca's Tepic knocks us out with three tackles, ending attempt one. Attempt two goes much better. I get a Blitzel with slightly higher HP, but Tepic takes off seven HP with tackle, and then just tail whips the fight away. Chiron Snivy is doing big damage, but decides to just throw the battle away too with a leer at the end, even though it could have taken Blitzel out. I'll take it though. I see Blitzel has a quiet nature, plus special attack and minus speed, which is pretty mixed. I name her Brave. I get to Accumulo Town and meet my immortal enemy, Getsis. I'll fight him soon enough, but I've gotta make sure I get through end first. I got Break up to level 7, and after a growl, Quick Attack's damage output is pretty pitiful, but I slowly get Purloin down until Critical Hit gets me the win. I'm realizing Blitzel isn't hitting very hard, and can't take a lot of hits now either. She needs more move diversity, but that's not something that we're really gonna get this run, unfortunately. My mom makes her trek all the way up to Route 2 to give me the running shoes, which, thanks, but I feel like there was an easier way here. I get to my fight with Bianca at level 9. I'm honestly a little worried, but I get through Lillipop at 3 quick attacks, taking only 2 tail whips in return. Tepic is scary as a result, though. It starts with Ember, but thankfully no burn. Quick attack is doing about a quarter of health each time, and I get Tepic to a quarter, but Bianca uses a potion! This is scary. Break hasn't taken a tackle yet, but this gives Bianca more time to use one. I get Tepic back to half health, but then a critical quick attack takes him out! I'm so glad we won that, but there's a huge amount of work we need to do before we take Chiron on. I get Break to level 12, and he learns Shockwave in the process, an incredibly useful move right now. It's time to take on Chiron. Snivy spams Leer as his quick attack looks to be arranged to be a 3 hit. After his Orenberry activates, Snivy finally uses Tackle. I'm worried, but it only does 10 damage. Finally, after two more quick attacks, he goes down, and then Perlin faints to a single Shockwave. Much better than last run, and now with some training, I can face Ash's worst companion. I head into Silen with Break a bit under the cap at level 13. I truthfully just got bored grinding, so I gave up. This could be a little dicey, but barring any catastrophes, I think Break has just enough bulk to pull this off. Break takes Lillipup down with two shockwaves, seeing only a workup in response. But now the big challenge is here. Pansage. Quick Attack looks like a 5 hit KO, and Pansage goes for workup twice. This is getting scary. I get him under half, and he hits Vine Whip, taking Break all the way to 17 HP. Thankfully, an Orenberry I gave her kicks in, so we should be able to survive another attack. I use this turn to set up Leer as Vine Whip brings Break to 8 HP! But now I can use Quick Attack to wipe out Pansage for the win! Phew. 
Fennel meets me and drags me to her sketch lab to run her sketch errands, through which I have to fight the sketch evil team. This is pretty chill, all things considered, and now we can just move to Route 3. Here I bring out a Patrat I caught for cutting for this double battle and just have it spam Lyra's break hits shockwaves to one hit both purloins. I also make Break get some training in by forcing her to play in the sandbox. She's gotta master her weaknesses if she wants to beat Chirin. My fight with him actually goes pretty well thanks to some ridiculous luck. I start by paralyzing his Snivy with a Thunder Wave as he uses Leer. I get a critical hit on Quick Attack, bringing him to half HP and activating his Ornberry. Vine Whip only does about a quarter, so we've got some room to work. My next Quick Attack also crits, sending him low as he just uses Leer. I guess breaks the crit queen. One more quick attack gets rid of Snivy. Perlin goes down in two shockwaves after a useless sand attack for the win. I was really lucky, wow. Breaks rewarded for her service by being replaced by the blitz I catch immediately after. I name her Boogaloo. This is the official starter of the run. Boogaloo has motor drive, which is okay, and a bold nature, plus defense and minus attack. She has good defensive and special defensive IVs, and pretty much awful everything else except speed. We'll see how she does. The answer is apparently not well. I train her up on Route 2, and she doesn't even last a level before Patrat takes her out. In Attempt 3, Break gets a crit on Quick Attack to take the Blitzel we find out, prematurely ending the attempt before it ever really began. But on Attempt 4, we catch a Blitzel after a Quick Attack takes him to a third. Boogaloo 2 has a mild nature, which raises special attack and lowers defense. Not bad, though it might make the next few gym leaders rough. But he has incredible IVs, with HP and special attack being great, and only special defense being bad. In Necreen City, I blatantly lie and tell this woman I have a Tepig, so that she'll give me a charcoal. At level 18, Blitzel learns Flame Charge, and having an item that boosts fire moves is gonna be really nice when I take on Berg. But before anything else, I've gotta take on N. This end battle is considerably easier for me than in my Rock Nuzlocke. Here Pidove and Timpole are weak to Boogaloo, and Timber is neutral. Pidove outspeeds speeds with Quick Attack to take off 10 HP before Shockwave KOs. Another takes out Timpole, who N decides is his best option to fight an Electric type for some reason, as Boogaloo levels up to 19. Timber gets taken to the yellow, but just uses Leer as we move on to Lenora. Honestly, Lenora is just brutal, and let's talk about why. In these games, she's always a potential run-ender. Herdier and Watchhog hit hard for this point in the game, with both having really high attack stats and powerful moves. All it takes is a single Leer for any attack to become a one-hit KO on Boogaloo. Herdier's Intimidate means that I have to rely on Shockwave to win and not Quick Attack or Flame Charge, but Shockwave is only a three-hit KO. I have to use Thunder Wave and hope for an obscene amount of paralysis luck to make it through. This goes awfully. Herdier knocks Boogaloo out to end attempt 4, but before I reset, I try again a few times to see if this fight is even doable. The best I got was Boogaloo getting knocked out by Watchhog after a retaliate. It's definitely possible with paralysis luck, but the amount of luck it requires is pretty extreme. I would need Herdier to freeze up at least twice, and then Watchhog probably a bunch more. And the worst thing about this is that, offensively at least, this Blitzel is about as perfect as you can get. He had perfect special attack and HP IVs, and a nature that boosts his special attack, and it still wasn't close to enough. There's nowhere I can train special attack EVs yet either, so this was the best I could possibly do. On attempt 5, I get a Blitzel with a neutral defense and special attack nature, but great defense IVs. I train Boogaloo up in Wellspring Cave to give lots of defense and speed EVs. I make it all the way to Watchhog, getting her down to a quarter. But I'm just not able to do much damage, and I get taken out on crunch. I decide to try to reset until I get a Blitzel with good enough special attack and defense IVs to have a chance. This takes 18 attempts. I finally get one with near perfect defense and special attack IVs, train her up, and then take on Lenora. She makes it through Herdier on full health thanks to some luck, and then paralyzed Watchhog, taking a Leer. A Hypnosis activates her Chesto Berry as Shockwave gets to work. Thanks to two consecutive missed Hypnosises, Boogaloo can get another Shockwave and a Flame Charge off before we might be in range of a KO. I hit Shockwave, and it's not enough. Boogaloo gets taken out. Now here's the thing. This is doable. It requires a ton of luck, but the problem is that I can't use Shockwave all four times because it'll activate a Super Potion. But it's not doing enough if I don't. I'm basically dependent on a crit or some obscene luck post-super potion, and at this point I've spent days here. 
I'm trying to think of other ways I can win, and only one comes to mind. This requires me to break a rule I've had for myself when doing these Nuzlocke's, but it's an emergency. If I give myself a different starter and then keep it after my Route 3 battle with Chirin, I'll have two Pokémon I can use, likely with better defense too, allowing for better game planning. I decide to give myself a Joltig. It's bulkier and has better special attack in general, so I'm hoping it makes Lenora manageable. But there's a new problem I didn't anticipate. Joltik starts out with only one offensive move, a 15 PP, 20 base power leech life. Unless it crits or high rolls every turn, it's virtually impossible to beat Bianca's Tepic at this point in the game. I lose attempts 19 and 20 this way. I haven't ruled out Joltik yet, but I'd need to skip the first Bianca fight, and I don't want to do that without trying something else first. I decide to try with Tynemo as my starter instead. The rival battles go almost comically well, with Tynemo having a fantastic early game move pool. I find out she has a jolly nature, minus special attack and plus speed, which could hurt for Lenora, but I guess we'll see. I name her Feel. N goes down easy, and so does Bianca. Churn is a little trickier, but it tackles a 4 hit KO post Orenberry, and Perlin goes down pretty fast after too. Silent is also pretty interesting. Feel used a spark, and it looks like it's doing under half to the Lillipup who just goes for work up. But I just go for another, and it takes him out! Nice! Pansage hits Feel with a Vine Whip, but it only does 7 damage. It uses work up after Thunder Wave, but does nothing of significance as 4 tackles gets us the win. Battle 3 with Chirin goes about as planned. Snivy takes Feel to just above half and gets a Leer off, but thankfully stays poisoned so that a final tackle takes him out. Curling goes down in a spark, and now I get to catch Blitzel. I catch one, and like before, name him Boogaloo. He has a Lax Nature, which will hopefully help here, and Lightning Rod, which I'm really excited about. I use Field to take out the Team Plasma Grunt, allowing more time for Boogaloo to grind. My battle with N went pretty much the exact same as before, and now it's time for Lenora. My team is at the cap, and I'm really nervous. This'll take a ton of luck. Let's see how it goes after all that. We start with Boogaloo paralyzing her deer like before. Her deer uses takedown, but misses, which is promising. She then gets frozen after a shockwave. After a second, she hits takedown, prompting a super potion, but her deer freezes on her last turn to attack, allowing two more shockwaves to take her down. Watchhog is next. I just need Boogaloo to get this thunder wave off without getting hurt in return. And she does! This could be it. Boogaloo can't take any more damage, so I switch to Feel as Watchhog freezes again! The spark takes off around a third as Watchhog misses Hypnosis, and then another brings her to the low yellow as she hits Retaliate. But it takes Feel to about 40% health, meaning we've won! One more spark gets us badge number two! God, this feels amazing, and I'm so glad it finally happened after this long. It's almost a joy even that Team Plasma steal the Dragonite Skull at this point. I'm just so ready to leave this city. I tracked down the skull, and the grunt who had it was really trying to buy time, with a bunch of successful detects and a torment from the Sandile on field. We nearly avert getting killed, and Lenora rewards us for our troubles by just giving us a moonstone, though for everything she put us through, we should get way more. Now we're on to Castilia City. I'm ready to take on the gym now, and wow, they really keep pushing me away from these as soon as I enter, huh? I guess I'll just take on Team Plasma instead. After a grunt returns to the scene of the crime, I have to go back to where I just was to take his sand dials down thanks to Feels Levitate. Bert lies and says he was at the Accumula speech, and then gets us gives Bianca's Muna back. But I guess we don't care about anyone else's stolen Pokemon. That'll be for the sequel games to sort out. But now it's time for Berg, and as I'm making my way through the gym, I realize my strategy of charcoal boosted flame charges isn't doing enough to take out even the Swaddles, so I need to reassess. I come up with a strategy I haven't used since my Omega Ruby Nuzlocke, Charge Beam Strats. This requires a ton of luck of course, but basically if I can avoid poison and too many untimely misses, we should be good. I open with Feel, who has an Eviolite attached. She Thunder Waves as Whirlipeed hits Poison Tail for 9 damage. A Charge Beam connects and gets Boost 1 as a second Poison Tail hits for 10 damage. I get a crit on Charge Beam plus Boost 2 to take Whirlipeed to the low yellow as he freezes. Berg uses a Hyper Potion as Charge Boom connects, but no boost, and then a 4th hits and gets boost 3 as Poison Tail brings Feel to 40%. Charge Beam 5 hits and gets me boost 4 as it KOs Whirlipede. Now Dwebble's out, and I can survive 2 attacks if I'm lucky. I click Charge Beam and... It misses! No! 
Dwebble uses Smackdown to bring Field to 13 HP. This is dicey. Another Charge Beam brings Dwebble to the low yellow, and he uses Smackdown, leaving Field at 3 HP. Ah! I've got to go to the next part of my strategy early, but now it's a free switch as I bring Boogaloo into a now healed Dwebble. Shockwave looks like it's doing half as Smackdown does a quarter. More than I'd like for sure, but another Shockwave leaves Dwebble on just a sliver, so Smackdown hits again. Boogaloo's Orenberry activates, bringing him above half. I decide to go for a speed boost and use Flame Charge to take Dwebble out. It's just Levani now, and Flame Charge does half to him as he responds with a string shot. Huh. I'll take it. One more Flame Charge leaves Levani on a sliver too, but he just responds with string shot again? And with one more, I've won my third badge. That battle was a roller coaster, and I'm glad it worked out okay, but I'm really confused by the string shots. My best guess is that the AI saw that I had a boost and prioritized getting rid of it. I can't complain, though. That was probably on the unluckier end of the surprisingly narrow window for success I've had this whole run. Bianca calls me up to fight, so I get my team about a level each, and then meet her at the Route 4 gate. I open with Boogaloo, who gets intimidated, but hits a shockwave to do what looks like half damage after a thunder wave. Her deer doesn't do anything, and another Shockwave leaves her with a sliver. Bianca super potions, and now Shockwave looks like it's doing under half, but apparently not because another takes her deer out. Two more take out Muna, and then I hit a Thunder Wave on Pig Knight before he uses Flame Charge to take off a third. Shockwave crits to leave him in the low yellow, and then Bianca has super potions to bring him back up. But Shockwave crits again, allowing me to take him out next turn. What a ride! Pensage then goes down to a couple flame charges for a chill but weird battle. I decide to get some training in before Chirin and get Boogaloo right up to the cap so that he evolves into Zip Strike Up. His Servine and Lipard were scaring me, but now I head in, take a quick attack from Pidov before getting rid of him with Shockwave, then Servine with two charcoal boosted flame charges, seeing only a growth in between. Pampor with Shockwave and Lipard with two Shockwaves, taking a crit pursuit in between. Not bad at all now. I speed through some Team Plasma stuff to go to Route 16, where after a couple minutes of running around, I find and catch an Amolga I name Ladyland. Ladyland has a neutral, docile nature. She won't be immediately super helpful, but I finally have a hard counter to grass types, which have been giving me a lot of trouble so far. Bianca's dad shows up just to pretty much get immediately talked out of trying to force his daughter to come home. I didn't realize her mom wanted her to go on this journey though, so that makes her dad even lamer. He's probably my least favorite character in the Pokemon universe. My battle with N is interesting. Sandile uses Embargo on Feel, and does about a quarter with Assurance as Tackle 3 hits him. I switch into Ladyland once Darumaka comes out, because without Eviolite, I'm worried Feel could get taken out. And this wasn't a bad thought, because Ladyland gets taken to a third and burned with a fire punch, though she paralyzes him in the process at least. Guess it's time to switch though. I bring in Boogaloo, who takes Darumaka out in two sock waves. Sim goes for Scraggy. Now Sigilyph is left. I have to be really careful, because my Cutting Pants here is in my party, so he can absorb experience, but Sigilyph uses Whirlwind as I paralyze him. But thankfully, Feel comes in, who is just what I wanted, and Two Sparks takes Sigilyph out as he wastes a turn setting up Tailwind. Elisa's not too scary, though I need her to use her Hyper Potions early or get Boogaloo to level 28 fast from my calculations. I open with Boogaloo, who gets hit with a quick attack before Shockwave takes Amolga just above half. One more gets him to the red as Amolga goes for Pursuit. Elisa Hyper Potions and Shockwave crits, so we repeat. But this time Shockwave does under half again. She decides to switch to Zip Strika, so Shockwave activates his Lightning Rod, not that it matters. But then I start using flame charges to get him to the red, using an Oran Berry for extra recovery. I luckily got a crit, speeding this up, but then on the final turn, I take out Zubstrika with quick attack. Now it's just the Amolgas, as Boogaloo goes to level 28. Elisa's full health one comes in, and hits quick attack as Shockwave does just under half still. I decide to use Thunder Wave, which freezes her, and then I switch to Feel, thankfully not getting pursued in the process. With that, a Spark and Charge Beam take the first out! The second one I use a spark after he hits Feel with Pursuit, and we paralyze each other, funnily enough, but after another Pursuit, a Charge Beam takes him out for the win! My next cheer and fight is kind of funny. I lead with Ladyland, hoping to trigger Static with Fake Out, but alas, Spark takes Lipard to a third before he uses a Pursuit, taking Ladyland to two thirds. Another takes him out with a crit, though it definitely didn't matter, but would have loved that a turn earlier. Pampor goes down in a spark. Trinkle outspeeds and hits Quick Attack to bring Ladyland to the yellow before two sparks take him down. 
What's with all these second turn crits though? I decide to hit Spark on Servine to try and get Paralysis, but no luck, and he hits a Leaf Tornado in return to drop Lady Land's accuracy. I switch Boogaloo in, and Leaf Tornado does almost a third and gets the accuracy drop. This could get bad. Flame Charge connects and takes him to a quarter before Citrus Recovery. He then uses Growth. Boogaloo uses Flame Charge and hits, beating Chirin. We then punk the champion's champions, even though Lady Land carries us. Clay blames us for allegedly helping Team Plasma escape, but then he makes us round them up? This man does not have a good idea of who to trust. But we go and explore cold storage, and Chirin makes me do all the searching while he stays at the door. I really didn't luck out with this deal. It's time for Clay, and I've got a couple of weapons I'm excited to use here. Boogaloo's Flame Charge and Ladyland's newly learned acrobatics. Okay, I'm really embarrassed this happened, but I apparently didn't record footage for this battle, so I'm just going to show footage of the gym leading up to it. I'm really sorry. As for the battle though, Clay's Excadrill is insurmountable. I wipe almost immediately, and I try a few times again for the second seemingly impossible roadblock in this run. I thought I'd recorded that, I, again, very sorry. Bulldoze does almost 100% damage to Boogaloo, and Flame Charge only does around a quarter in return. Pivoting easily is impossible because Volt Switch doesn't work on ground types. And finally, Ladyland can't do much damage on him with Acrobatics, so Rock Slide makes short work of her. After thinking about it for a day, I decide that the only strategy that makes sense is breaking a personal guideline of not using evasion strats when necessary. By using Double Team, I can attempt to boost Emolga's evasion to hopefully waste Rock Slide's PP, and ideally get a damageless swagger or two to make Excadrill doable. So what attempt do I beat Clay on? Attempt number 38. That's right, it takes 17 attempts to do it. You'd think Lenora would be the big roadblock here, and she definitely ended one attempt, but actually Silent and Elisa were way harder for me. I needed Tynamo to be perfect, otherwise Pansage could wreck me. I made a decision too that in retrospect really hurt me for Elisa. I kept replacing Shockwave with Spark on Zipstrika, making it more susceptible to static and meaning I had to get creative with some strategies, mostly starting with Emolga and pivoting in. I actually had an attempt end in the cold storage randomly enough. I made it to Clay twice during these attempts. Either Emolga would take too much damage from Croc Rock or would simply get taken out by Rock Slide. This whole process is taking forever. For reference, I started this challenge in early March, and now it's April. So on attempt 38, we head in. I open with Ladyland, who immediately uses Double Team as Croc Rock misses Swagger. I use another as Swagger hits. I'm able to use a third Double Team as Croc Rock hits Torment, which isn't good. I've got to use Acrobatics. And Croc Rock survives on a sliver! I wasn't expecting that. And it lands Crunch in return. Ugh. Will we paralyze it at least? Now, as Clay heals, I can use Double Team 4 before getting a crit on Acrobatics to take Croc Rock out. Ladyland levels up too! Now it's Excadrill, and I use Double Team 5 as Rock Slide misses. Next turn, Acrobatics looks like it's doing a quarter, and we avoid Rock Slide again. I then set up my final Double Team as Rock Slide misses. One more Acrobatics takes Excadrill just under half, and then Pursuit takes him to a quarter as we dodge two more Rock Slides. Finally, our last Acrobatics takes him out! If we're not screwed by Torment, we've got this. I'm screaming in joy right now at my luck. Pursuit does a third to Palpitoad, as he just sets up Aqua Ring in response. We've done it! One more Acrobatics takes him down, and we've got our fifth badge. I'm hoping no more crazy roadblocks, but I guess we'll see. I actually thought it could take longer, so I'm counting myself as lucky. My fight with Bianca is a welcome break, and outside of Musharna, her team goes down easily. Clay meets up with us and gets rid of a spider web, a really cool field obstacle that I wish we saw more of. It turns out it was prepped by Team Plasma, who somehow possessed Spider-Man-like powers, and divulges this while shading Chirin and Bianca in the process to my delight. In Charge Stone Cave, I catch a new Pokemon, a Joltik I name Slide. Slide has the less preferable a Nerve and a Gentle Nature, plus Special Defense and Minus Defense, which is okay. My battle with N is actually hard to start with. I send out Feel against his Bulldore. Feel at this point is starting to feel pretty weak. But she's the best one for the job because she's got Levitate. I immediately paralyzed Bulldor as he uses Smackdown to do about a quarter. I made a mistake in retrospect here as I go for Spark, doing a little over a quarter as well as Bulldor goes for Iron Defense. Now I course correct and just spam Charge Beam until he faints. I get the boost I need to do this in two hits, but 
now feels racked up too much damage, and I need to switch her out as Joltix come in. I swap for Boogaloo as Electroweb simply activates Motor Drive. A Flame Charge takes Joltik low, but it's not quite enough, and he responds with Gastro Acid. Now Electroweb could make this harder, but it doesn't actually matter as Flame Charge takes him and Ferroseed out easily. Following that, two more take out Clink, getting us an easier win than it started as at least. Juniper has a deeply confusing agree to disagree line that feels so out of place in a narrative about a terrorist group. Just north of Mist Altrum, Hiker offers me an Amolga in exchange for a Bulldor, but I already have one, so I have to reject his trade. I'm not trying to be Elisa here. Interestingly, now that I've made it past my biggest obstacle so far at least, my team is starting to fall behind. In Celestial Tower, trainers are able to rack up a ton of damage on my frail Pokemon, and they're not able to do quite enough in return, even Boogaloo and Ladyland. But even with that, Skyla's battle is really easy. I lead with Boogaloo and take out her Subat with a Spark. Unpheasant is next, and actually survives in healing range with the second, but she chose to use Razor Wind, so she's stuck, and I can wipe her out with the third. Swan is last, and we outspeed and take her down too for possibly the easiest gym battle I've ever had. N jumps me as soon as I leave the gym and starts monologuing at me. I don't think I realized how patronizing he is before this run, but he's speaking to me as though I'm three, and it's killing me. I fight Chirin, and I mess up the battle order, so I start with Slide against his Unpheasant. I decide to switch to Feel, thankfully as he uses Detect. Air Slash doesn't flinch, and somehow doesn't crit despite the massively boosted rate, and Spark takes him to half. After some stalling, I can finally take him out. I switch into Ladyland, who takes a Leaf Blade for more damage than I'd expect before Acrobatics gets rid of Servine. Spark leaves Simipore with a little health, and Skull brings Ladyland to 5 HP! That was scary. I switch to Boogaloo, who gets hit with Fury Swipes for around a third before taking Simipore out. Now it's just Lipard. And after a fake out, Discharge paralyzes and hits a Citrus Berry before he just uses Home Claws. One more Discharge and I get Surf! With this new power in hand, I hightail it through Twist Mountain and pass some plot to get to Isira City, where, after running around, I find and catch a Stunfisk. I name her Avenue. She's got a Calm Nature, minus attack and plus special defense, which is meh, and Limber, probably the worst of her two abilities. Her attack IVs are also awful, which is bad because she's got a vitally diverse move pool, but doesn't learn any good special ground moves by level up or TM. But at least I've got a ground type now. And with Avenue, I've officially got every Pokemon I can catch this run. While training Avenue up, Slide evolves into Galvantula, giving him a much needed bulk and special attack boost. Shortly after that in Isiris Gym, Feel evolves into Electric. While I could evolve her again, I'm gonna keep her here for now. This gym battle is a little weird because Bryson's team has more bulk than you'd expect. My team doesn't match up great, especially with two ice weaknesses now, but I've got something that just might work. I picked up Flash Cannon and Twist Mountain, which I teach Feel. We enter battle, and Vanillish just sets up Acid Armor as Flash Cannon does over half! Nice! Then Feel dodges a Frost Breath and takes Vanillish out. Beartick is next, and I use a Thunder Wave to paralyze him. He freezes up twice in a row as I hit two Flash Cannons to take him to a quarter. But then he uses Swagger, and Feel hits herself! And then Beartick gets a crit slash to send Feel to a quarter! That was terrifying, and thankfully she was holding an Eevee Light still. Let's bring out Bugaloo. Beartick's paralyzed again, so Flame Charge knocks him out. Paragonal is last, and with a single Flame Charge, we take them out for the seventh badge. I definitely got lucky with the paralysis and the frost breath in this, though I think I'd still have been able to manage otherwise, but that was wildly lucky. I calculated it, and the probability that I'd get three freezes plus a miss from frost breath is around a tenth of a percent. I've gotten lucky before, but that was really, really lucky for a first attempt. In Dragon Spiral Tower, Team Plasma can't stop reminding me how much my friends are in the general vicinity, even though they're barely doing anything. But I get to the top and see that N's got the ultimate electric type Pokemon. This is an unforgivable attack on our mastery as an electric trainer, and we need to crush him soon. But first we have to go to Relic Castle and figure out whether Team Plasma wants us to get the Lightstone or not. We run into my nemesis, I'll crush him soon, but he kinda just bodies Alder and accepts his fate. My shocking battle skills must get me the Lightstone, because there's really no other reason I can give for why they give me it. But now I've got to face a Bianca fight that I apparently have residual trauma from. She has a fully evolved team that can all hit hard, though thankfully there aren't a lot of super effective moves this time. Because her Statland has Intimidate, I go in with Slide. 
Thunderbolt only does about 45% while Stoutland starts setting up work up. That's terrifying to me. If I can't take her out after she sets up, my team could be in serious trouble. I decide to use Electroweb to bring her under half, but hopefully not trigger a heal. It looks like she's borderline, but no heal, and Thunderbolt takes her out! Phew, that was clutch. Embor is next, and while I planned on switching to Ladyland, I realized Embor has rollout, and Ladyland also doesn't have enough bulk to withstand probably about two hits from him. So I go into Avenue, who loses a little under a third to take down, but whose Rocky Helmet makes it so that Embor loses a fifth too. Mudbomb brings Embor to the red after her takedown misses, so Bianca full restores before Muddy Water brings Embor to the half and gets accuracy drop. Takedown brings Avenue under half, though he goes to the low yellow as a result. I don't want him to take a crit, so I decide to switch to feel. This was probably a mistake, as Bianca heals, but what can you do? Spark takes off a little over a third, as Takedown does about that much in return thanks to Eevee Light. I decide to just go for Thunder Wave as another Takedown brings Field to the yellow. I then make a risky play and use Spark instead of switching to Boogaloo, who I think would be frailer. But Field survives Takedown on 11 HP, and then can take Embor out with a Spark next turn! Pantage comes out, so I switch to Ladyland, who gets hit much harder than I'd like with Seed Bomb, but takes Pantage out with Acrobatics! Musharna is last, and Acrobatics doesn't even do half. Psybeam hits, and I cannot stay in here. Let's go back to slide. Psybeam still does a lot, but I can take another of those. Signal Beam then takes Musharna out for the win! That was stressful! And even though my team was way better equipped for this battle than last time, it still required a lot of precision. Bianca says goodbye, and you can really tell the developers were hedging on which game I was playing by the way she frames truth and ideals. Gets his corners me to try and intimidate me, but it's so hard to take him seriously when he's talking about Bianca and his examples. Why would you care? Team Plasma gets to confuse everyone in Opelucid City, and you can really tell they've moved beyond the need to give anyone expositional information. I take on the gym and quickly realize my team just struggles against dragon types. I'm trying to figure out anything I can do, but these move pools aren't giving me any great ideas. There is one thing I can do, however. I evolve Feel into Electros, making this the final iteration of my team. But I forgot to switch her item, so she still goes into this fight carrying an Eviolite. Whoops! I lead with Ladyland, who launches an Acrobatics at Fracture as he uses Dragon Dance. Acrobatics leaves Fracture in the low yellow, so I get this amazing stretch for Draden Hyper Potions, and I bring him right back down until his potions are gone, and then an Acrobatics finishes Fracture off. Dritagon is out next, and I don't have a lot of great answers here. I decide to Volt Switch into Avenue, who immediately gets hit by Dragon Tail and switched out back to Ladyland. Okay, I probably messed up here and go for Acrobatics, which leaves Dredagon in the red! Ugh! And he responds with a Night Slash that thankfully doesn't crit, and activates Static. I decide to go for Volt Switch here, leaving Dredagon on a sliver and going to slide for some reason. I can't really figure out why, but he gets hit with Dragon Tail, so hello feel! Flash Cannon gets the KO as Haxorus comes in. Slash does about a quarter as I use Thunder Wave. I go for Crunch next, which does around 40% as Haxorus uses Dragon Dance. Outside of a crit, I should be fine. But it doesn't even matter because Crunch crits on Haxorus and takes him out! Not bad at all. Professor Juniper meets me outside the gym and gives me a Master Ball. I wonder if Chirin and Bianca got one, but I think the game thinks that I'm inherently more special and worthy anyways because I'm blander than either, at least according to N which is such a weird way to think about your lead. Chiron challenges me to our final battle. This would ordinarily be scary, but all of his Pokémon are weak to either electric or bug moves, and we coincidentally have an electric slash bug type Pokémon. I lead with Ladyland though, because I don't want to take any chances with a stab neutral flying attack. After a detect, I hit a spark, taking Unpheasant to half and getting the paralysis as he just goes for taunt. And then I hit a Volt Switch, taking him out and switching into Slide. Slide immediately takes out Simipore with an Expert Belt boosted Thunderbolt, but then Superior outspeeds to use Coil. I take him below half with the Signal Beam, but he uses a boosted slam to take Slide just above half! That could have been scary, but you gotta love Superior's awful attack stat. The second Signal Beam takes him out, and it's just Slide Pride left as Slide levels up! One more Signal Beam gets us the win and puts these awful rivals behind us at last. Chirin starts sputtering some utter nonsense about everyone's truth and ideals, but it just feels too vapid to mean anything. At least we can finally continue. After some training, I make it to the league. We'll see how this goes. My team could either be amazing or horrible, and I have no idea. But I do know that Caitlyn is a perfect matchup for us, so I start with her. 
I lead slide against Reuniclus. Hit Signal Beam. And she survives in the red! Psychic comes back and hits slide hard to the yellow. Thankfully, Caitlyn's low enough to heal, so we do this back and forth twice until I can take her out. But it's bad if Slide can't take out her Reuniclus with a stab super effective expert belt boosted move. I probably can't one shot most of her team then. At least a Thunderbolt gets rid of Sigilith, but now there's no way Slide can get rid of Musharna without crazy luck. I decide to switch to Avenue, for whom Psychic is a 4 hit KO, and bring Musharna to half with two Thunderbolts before she gets sent to 19 HP and I have to switch. I go into Feel, who takes a lot of damage from Psychic, but takes Musharna out with Crunch, and gets Shell Bell recovery in the process. It's just got the tell now. Crunch takes her just below half, giving Feel two thirds HP after recovery, which is necessary because Psychic sends her all the way down to a fifth. Jeez, but one more Crunch does the job. This Elite Four may be trickier than I thought. My battle with Grimsley essentially confirms this. Scrafty survives acrobatics to hit Ladyland with Crunch, but thankfully no defense drop. Two full restores later and I can take him out. Crocodile comes in and I immediately switch to slide just in time for her to use Crunch, sending him to a third! That's terrifying, but she doesn't outspeed and a signal beam takes her out and gets slide to level 51. But now it's time for his scariest Pokemon. My Sharp comes in and I immediately switch to Feel, who gets hit with Night Slash to just above half. She then outspeeds and uses it again! No crit, no crit, no crit, no phew! Brick Break takes her out. Leopard is last, and Field definitely can't take her on, so I switch to Avenue, who takes Night Slash well, and whose Rocky Helmet does a good chunk of damage as two Sludge Bombs contribute to take Leopard out. We're halfway through and this is going really rough. I'm pretty scared of Marshall. Right before I went in, I decided to do damage calculations for Acrobatics on throw, and it didn't KO, meaning it almost certainly won't for Conkeldor either. I need a new strategy, and after looking through my TMs to see if anything could work, I'm left with only one option that doesn't feel inherently really risky, Volt Switch. This way I can get some chip damage in while evading all the rock moves Marshall's whole team has for some reason. I teach about half my team Volt Switch and head in. I lead with Ladyland who hits a Volt Switch for about a quarter damage and goes into Boogaloo. Boogaloo takes about a third from Stone Edge and then uses Volt Switch allowing me to go into Feel and dodge Bulldoze. I decide to try Spark which does a third, but Payback does a third in return. Marshall heals, so I'm able to get a couple sparks off, paralyzing throw, but then Stone Edge hits to bring her to the yellow. I don't think I can survive another heal, but it looks borderline. I go for spark, Marshall doesn't heal, and we KO throw! That's amazing! Sock is next, and I hit Vault Switch, but Sock out speeds, and misses Stone Edge! I didn't think either of those would happen, but I nearly had a heart attack. That was terrifying. But now I get to break sturdy and freely switch into Lady Lamb. And Acrobatics finishes Sock off. Conkeldor is out now, but my other two Volt Switchers are pretty bruised. But I've got an idea. I use Volt Switch and go into Avenue. Stone Edge barely does anything, so now I get to start attacking. Hammerarm does a good chunk as I hit Thunderbolt to take Conkeldor to a sliver. Ugh, now Marshall heals and Thunderbolt does half. I don't think Stunfist can do much now, so it's time to switch back to Ladyland, who gets hammered to a third with Hammerarm. But she's alive, and can now take Conkeldor out with an Acrobatics. All that's left is Mean Chow. Do we outspeed? We do, and we take him out for the win! Lady Lan levels up for her hard work. I saved the hardest for last. Chantal is terrifying to me. My team has very few strengths against ghost types, and three of her Pokemon could tear through them at any moment. I make the decision to get my team to the cap of level 52, using rare candies. If I'm going to do this, this is the only way I can widen my margins almost at all. I decide to lead with Ladyland, who hits Cough Egregious with Acrobatics, gaining Mummy in the process. Cough Egregious responds with a Will-O-Wisp, which sucks, but Ladyland didn't factor into my plans much anyways for this battle. I hit Volt Switch to get Cough Egregious to the yellow, and then switch to Slide. Slide takes a Shadow Ball and gets a special drop, but now he responds with Thunderbolt to take her out. Chandelure is next though, and this could get rough. I use Volt Switch to get into Boogaloo, who takes a Fire Blast on 27 HP. That was clutch. She responds with a Volt Switch of her own to get some more chip damage on Chandelure. Volt Switch crits, which is bad for me because now Chandelure has more turns to do serious damage. I go into Avenue, who takes a Psychic and gets the drop, which could actually be terrifying. Chantal heals, and then Avenue uses Surf, which does half! Okay, we can do this. 
Chandelier uses Fire Blast. No, no, but it misses. Surf takes her out. That was incredible. Golurk comes out, and I'm celebrating before I remember it has Earthquake. I immediately switch to Feel, then take a fairly weak Shadow Punch before Crunch brings them to the low yellow. Chantal heals again, so we just send them right back before getting another KO with Crunch next turn. It's just Jellicent now, and considering Feel has way more health than I thought she would, I let her stay in and go for Spark, which doesn't KO, but does paralyze. Jellicent uses Surf to bring Feel to the yellow, but now she takes her down for the win with a Crunch. That took me so long to plan, but now we finally beat the Elite Four. I can sort of take a breather. We make it to the champion as N destroys him. The Team Plasma Castle rises up and sends stairs through the league. Even if those stairs are just hitting walls, wonder how that affects entry. Chin condescends to Alder in the funniest way. Getsus comes out to try and intimidate me. I'm frightened, but I'll deal with him later. In the meantime, my special hero Dogbird Dragon awakes, and I catch it with my Master Ball. I brought an HM Mon to make sure Reshiram couldn't join my party, so they just get shoved into a box. I nicknamed them No, and now it's time for N. I open with Avenue. This is in part for Getsis, but also nobody else knows any ground moves. Zekrom uses Light Screen as I use Mud Bomb and get an Accuracy Drop. Zekrom then hits Giga Impact, taking some damage from Rocky Helmet. The second Mud Bomb takes them to under half and gets a second Accuracy Drop. Now I go for Sludge Bomb and get a Poison. Zekrom misses Giga Impact as Mud Bomb takes them to a sliver and they faint at the end of the turn. Next is Vanillux, and I go into Fuel, who dodges a blizzard before getting outsped and hit to a third with one as she responds with a hard brick break to match. Fuel obviously can't stay in though, so I swap out to Boogaloo, who also dodges a blizzard! Incredible! Next turn, Flame Charge takes Vanillux down! It crit too, which probably wasn't necessary, but it was cute. Kling Kling is next, and Boogaloo has way more health than I thought she would at this point, so I keep her in and use Flame Charge to do about 40% as Kling Kling uses Metal Sound. I hit a Spark to take Kling Kling under half, and they use Thunderbolt. You'd think the Team Plasma King would know better than to boost my speed, but I'll take it to the bank. Flame Charge gets the KO. Now it's Zoroark, so I Volt Switch into Slide, who gets hit by Focus Blast, but nothing too bad. Out speeds, and hit Signal Beam for the KO. It's Karakasta now, so fearing Stone Edge, I just Volt Switch back to Boogaloo, who gets taken to the red! Yikes! N heals as Boogaloo uses Spark, but it doesn't even do half. I decide to just switch to Ladyland to beat Aqua Jet, and then to Volt Switch out, getting the KO. I go into Avenue as N uses Archaeops. Archaeops uses Crunch. Ouch! But now Thunderbolt takes him out for the win! That was tricky, but it's time for the real challenge. Getsus threatens to kill me, so I guess it's time to finally take him on. I'm scared, but at least I think my team might match up better this time. I take the night to plan, but I'm ready. Here goes nothing. I lead with Avenue, but I think she could be better utilized later upon reflection, so I switch and feel. Cuff Egregious just uses Protect, so it's free. I hit him with Spark, giving Fuel Mummy as Cuff Egregious Toxics. Well, we're on a clock now. One that's sped up is Cuff Egregious Protects next turn. And then the turn after! But then we hit Crunch. And it crits, getting the knockout! That definitely mattered. Bouffalant comes in. And this is almost certainly it for Feel. I just have to hope she outspeeds to hit Brick Break. And she does! Bufflant uses Head Charge in return, knocking out Feel and taking him to a third. RIP Feel, you cured us for way more of this run than you should have. I bring in Ladyland, who hits Acrobatics for the KO. She gets Mummy as a result, but it doesn't matter too much because she Volt Switches on Bisharp to go into Avenue, who takes a weak Stone Edge. Night Sash hits harder, but now Bisharp is just above half and Mud Bomb can get the KO. Getsis sends out Seismitoad, and all of a sudden I realize I don't have a plan for him. I'd forgotten to teach Grass Knot, so now I have to improvise. I finally come up with something that just might work. I switch into Ladyland as Seismitoad uses Earthquake. Then I go for Pursuit as he uses Rain Dance. I hit Acrobatics and Muddy Water misses! Not needed, but I'll take it. One more Acrobatics gets the job done. But now it's Hydreigon, and I swap into Boogaloo in case I need Ladyland later. Hydreigon uses Surf, hitting incredibly hard to leave her on just 27 HP. Ah! This just went from an unofficial suicide mission into an official one. Boogaloo outspeeds and hits Spark, which paralyzes! That might have just saved us! Hydreigon goes for Fire Blast for some reason, but it misses and the rain stops! 
I take a while to decide to just rack up as much damage as I can before Bagloo faints and go for Spark. Hydreigon misses Focus Blast, so we've got another turn! But this time Focus Blast actually hits, taking down Bugaloo, my official starter, rest well. But now we can definitely take Hydreigon out. I go and decide who takes Hydreigon down with a Signal Beam and levels Ladyland up. Electros comes out now, and what a fitting way for this battle to end. Electric against Electros. I outspeed and hit a Signal Beam for a third as Acrobatics does two thirds. I've got a Sack Slide, so I use Signal Beam one last time as Flamethrower takes him down. R.I.P. Though I'm surprised Getsus didn't use Flamethrower first. But now it's Avenue's time to shine again. Anticipating a physical move, I go for Sludge Bomb. Crunch connects, doing a ton of Rocky Helmet damage to Electros, and that's game. Sludge Bomb connects, and we've got ourselves a shocking win! What a way to end! As we sit back and watch the credits, <laughs> Zekrom fart. I look back on this challenge. I had to break two personal guidelines to make this run even workable. But look at how far we came! This was rarely an easy run, especially around Lenora, Clay, Chantal, and Getsis. But we persevered. The biggest challenges in this run were my team's frailty and relatively shallow move pool for most of this challenge. It meant we really didn't have a lot of room to work with. In my successful attempt, most of my fastest Pokémon had really bad speed IVs too, making it harder to maneuver. That said, an elephant in the room here is that the moves on my team members were like pretty bad on net. I realized after N that Boogaloo didn't have a move over 70 base power for example. I really should have thought that through better towards the end, and I think next time I'll try to be much more proactive with move choices. My team really came into its own after the Driftvale Gym, and while Pokemon like Emolga stagnated a bit, I had a really strong, switchable, and diverse team by the end. My challenges with the Elite Four got me to adopt a strategy I'd never really used before in Volt Switches, and I found it super fun. I'd also never used Stunfisk at length before, and by the end, she was the backbone of my team. All in all, this was a really fun, if sometimes excruciating, run to play, and I'm really glad it culminated in a win. And that's a wrap! If you liked this video, please feel free to give a like or subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions or things you'd like to see me do, please feel free to leave a comment, at me on Twitter, or email me with your suggestion at ed40plays at gmail.com. And with that, this challenge is done! Catch you all next time!